Hey, it's Brick Nerd, and welcome back. Today we are taking a look at one of the most epic LEGO sets I have in my collection. Set 9474 Battle for Helms Deep. Uh, retailed for $130 back in 2002, 1,368 pieces and 8 minifigs. So, let's take a closer look. Also, I did want to briefly mention that the Dakar mock is kind of being scrapped, so it's been taken down. And um, yeah, if you haven't seen the video on it, go check it out. It should just be in my video feed. Um, pretty cool mock. And yeah, also remember, leave suggestions down below in the comments for what mocks you want to see me build next. Okay, so here we have the set and finding a place big enough to hold this was kind of a struggle. So let's not do that again. And um, yeah, let's start off with the figs because, come on, who doesn't? enjoy a good minifig. We'll start off with the Urukai. You get two of these guys. These are the fully battle geared up guys. You've got swords, shields, helmets, and the armor plating. That's what their face looks like underneath and on the back. So the face paint on one side and without the face paint on the other. And then you get two of those guys. You also get another Urukai soldier. He just looks a little different. And there you can see what the uh, torso printing looks like. Torso is the same on all of them. And then so is the head print. This guy just comes with a helmet and a axe. So pretty nice big axe there for chopping things. Um, we also have this Berserker Orc. It's what this guy's called. He has the torch and he's the one who's going to set off the gunpowder bomb. And he also comes with a sword as well. And then got a pretty mean looking face here. And some pretty nice paint on the chest. And then around the back, some detail on the back of the torso and the back of the head. So yeah, he is exclusive to this set as well. So Next up, we got Gimli. And he comes in a couple of other sets, so he's not terribly hard to find. He has two uh, axes, so a big one and kind of a little one. And then, it's a good look. He's got some nice printing on his helmet all the way around, some copper printing. You take that off. And then he has a nice uh, beard, facial hair mold, and his head really sinks into that, so I'll take that off for now. And then, Here's what his torso and face look like, then his alternate face and the back printing. The faces honestly don't do much, as soon as you don't see the, the mouth, so it's only really the eyebrows that you see. So the alternate face doesn't make too much sense, you don't even really see the eyebrows when you put the helmet back on anyway. So. Okay, and that's Gimli, and as I said, he comes in a couple of other sets, the Mines of Moria, the uh, Pirate Ship Ambush, and I think he came in a Dimensions pack too. But this guy is exclusive, this is Haldir, and he is kind of the commander or something of the elves that come to aid in this battle. He gets one of the nice longbows. Um, some really nice gold printing on his torso. Mm, lovely golden red combination. And then he has a face print which is very similar to Legolas. And that's around the back. And then he has one of the older star capes, of course. And then some back printing, which looks phenomenal too. So, turn his head back. And he has the nice ear mold with the big ears sticking out to indicate that he is indeed an elf. So put him back over there and then just a couple more to get through. This set came with eight minifigs, I think. So got quite a couple to get through. Here we got Aragorn and he also comes in a couple other sets. The Attack on Weathertop and the Pirate Ship Ambush and... He is the same in all of those sets. Nice jacket print on there. 
would have been nice to have the dual molded legs, but I don't think I did that back in 2012, so, oh well. Um, and then the long kind of hair, one face, two face, so yeah, basically everyone in this set has two faces, and uh, just some nice simple printing there, and then he does come with a sword, so, put him back there. Last and certainly not least is King Theoden, and he looks awesome. He does come with the cape, or at least my set came with two capes, so he also gets a cape. He has a printed shield, which is seen in this and only one other set, I believe. Um, and then he also gets a sword. Oh. Taking those accessories off and taking his helmet off. His helmet is beautifully printed all the way around as well with some paint along the top. He has an angry face and a smiling face. And then we'll take off just a little bit more. You can admire the armor printing, the leg printing. Now underneath he just has a simple kind of vest, tunic look. So. Then you could put him on with just the just the cape, like so, except they don't include a hairpiece, so it does kind of look odd. However, the perfect headpiece does exist, and it comes in the form of Luke Skywalker, or old man Luke. So that hairpiece looks pretty good, and then you have a kind of a more casual King Theoden. Theoden does come with a horse to ride on. It's just brown with a little bit of printing at the top there. You can focus on that. Then it has the leg articulation and the head articulation. So, pretty nice horse mode. And that just comes with a grey saddle. Set also includes the uh, brown pieces if you want to take off the saddle and just make it into a regular horse. Okay, so let's get the figs out of the way and move on to the set. The set is built in different pieces, as you would imagine. And they're kind of held together by Technic pins. So we'll start off with just this little side build. This is a little siege ladder. And you guys can put your figs climbing up there. So just clip them on. There you go. And this does work up here on the sides. It doesn't really reach the top. You could kind of maybe get it to hang off there if you wanted to. And you can also, of course, have it laying down over the edge like that. But it does look best, I think, on the corner. That's where they recommend you put it, so. Okay. So we'll start with this front part. Uh, the doors open and close, pretty nice build there you can just they're just on hinges so they open and close quite nicely a little bit of friction so that's nice uh, up above is where you can throw the rocks out so you can open these up and they include a ton like six of these uh, one by one cylinders things so you can throw them out here roll them onto the Okay, these cylinders can also be used on the catapult. You get a catapult up here, pretty basic catapult. Um, push down here, they fire off. You know how that works, I'm sure. There's a better look at kind of the up close detailing here with a torch and a flag. Moving along down at the side here, you do have the small wooden door that just kind of, you know, off to the side. A few little sneaky uh, diversion here. And here is going to be the catapult. So you can take Gimli or Aragorn or anyone and uh, set them up here. Set an Urukai up there. Take them out with that. They're not gonna really land on their feet ever and the most they're gonna overshoot the 
the walkway unless you put like no power on it, so even then. Um, so that's a pretty powerful catapult, and um, yeah, they're just probably gonna fly anywhere, everywhere, so there you go. Okay, moving on. Okay, one of the most recognisable scenes from this kind of battle is when the orcs are going to use their bombs to blow up, blow a hole in the water gate here, and uh, you do get this bomb, just a couple of pieces, a small little river going in there. This is what the Berserker Orc is here to ignite. They do provide a feature for you to blow this up around the back here. There is a little lever, and I'll show you that in a minute. And just pushing that back, you kind of bring that down. This doesn't, you kind of have to push it a couple of times to really get the pieces to come loose, but it does break out like that. And then you can move the armies inside. So. You can just kind of see a little bit of the technique mechanism back there. And I'll show you the whole back of this in a sec, but let's finish the outside first. One of the most important parts of any castle is uh, being able to have troops lining up all along these uh, side walls. They give you plenty of room to do that. You can fit figures over here, here. Even here, you'd be able to fit them along here if there was something there. You've got room for a couple here, here, and then, of course, now, of course, down here on the other side, there's a bridge over here. It's more walkways back to the keep kind of area. So, plenty of space to put figs. Okay, one of the other parts that is very recognisable of this castle is the kind of tower here with the massive horn inside. And uh, it's not terribly tall, it could be a little bit taller, but uh, definitely is a prominent feature of the set. So I think that's about it for the outside of the castle, so let's take a look inside. Once again, taking it piece by piece, this is the inside of the main kind of entrance area, so plenty, plenty of room in here. That does kind of lose a little bit of room when you put the, the keep inside here, but again, you can take that out and move it off to the side. There's plenty of room that's created by this kind of perimeter here. Taking a step back here to look at the, the tower, uh, you do have a ladder that goes all the way from the bottom to the top, where you can fit Gimli, probably not with his axes, and stand him up there to blow the horn. Down here, there is also a box, just in case someone needs to go get a box, so someone can see, just in case, you know. Always good to have boxes lying around. And then down here is the back of this uh, wall here, and you can see the mechanism here where the little yellow is, just this little bit that comes down to blow off the front section. And now I have to set that back up again. And the last main kind of interior part that we get is the inside of the keep, where there's kind of a small table and some weapons. This isn't exactly accurate to the movie, so to say, but uh, I think it's nice to have somewhere to sit your figures. So you can set Aragorn up here on a stool. And that Theodore on the throne. I think this is probably meant to represent, you know, after the battle when they go back and celebrate. So and then there are a couple of the nice dual molded spears and a couple of swords down there. There's also a nice stickered banner down here which you get so that's quite nice. There is a little lookout tower where King Theoden can go and oversee the battle. So that's how that looks. This is just the bridge that kind of comes up. It can be collapsed down if you want. So overall I think it's pretty clear how great of a set this is and um, the only complaint really like accuracy wise that I would have with this set is that they really made this main wall section super super short however they were kind enough to uh, release a separate set which features just another section of the wall which using the same pin system to you know, snap on it does and then you can extend and you can get this is uh seven or this is nine four seven one set number of the urukai army and that's the set. this piece comes in you can get many of those if you want just to extend the wall out and I think that makes the set look so 
so much better. So, and yeah, again, this is a separate set included separately in a different box, which you pay for separately. Just making that clear. Okay, so pretty epic set. Let's be honest, $130, you get probably the best castle that Lego has made to date. There's so many great features, so many great figures. Of course, you know, this isn't like a classic castle figures, but it's Lord of the Rings, so how can you top that, really? Lord of the Rings, one of the best Lego themes of all time, hands down, no debate about it, because it's just an amazing, amazing theme. And this is probably one of the standout sets of this theme. Um, just great builds. You can see just the detail along here, the attention to detail, really, on this set is great. And you get a ton, ton of great useful pieces. The price to piece ratio is great, 9.5 cents per piece, so under the 10 cents per piece mark there. There's, there's pretty much nothing wrong with this set, to be honest, if we're... If we're entirely accurate here, this is a pretty perfect set. So, that's basically going to conclude it for my review. Um, this is an amazing set. It is expensive on the aftermarket. Um, I think it's the old, it's around two or three hundred dollars. So, um, yeah. Definitely one worth picking up when it was on the market. Although, honestly, if you can find a good deal on the set, I'd still recommend picking it up for 150, 160. So there you go. There's my two cents. And um, yeah. So there you go. There you have it for my review of this set. Um, if you want to check out my other videos, go to my channel and check them out. So hit the subscribe button for more quality content. Uh, like and comment down below the set you want to see me review next time. So yeah. Thanks for watching, that's going to be it for me, and I'll see you all later. Bye.